Lastly, I will just say we are doing the crypto meetup, some of my favorite things to do over at uh, San Juan Smokehouse. And uh, there is a, uh, let's see. Actually, I didn't do that. Hold on. There is a link in the description. Let me put it in because I didn't do it. Actually, yeah, that's what we'll be doing. So it'll be from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. If you're in, I'll make this very simple. If you're in Puerto Rico, just Google Smokehouse. It's the only one. It's in the Condado Santurce area. And uh, just meet us down there. And uh, we'll be probably one of the, the majority of the people that are there are mostly the crypto people. So just stop by. I, I buy the first round of beers and Steven, the owner, buys the second round. So should be good times had by all. I hope to see everybody out there. And it's not like we couldn't use it. But that's it. So look, if you like today's video, uh, thumbs up. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we're talking about are very time sensitive, like you've just seen. But that's it. So now we'll get into the Q and A. I'll answer all your questions. This is my favorite part of the show, and we'll go from there. If you got to take off, adios. I'll see you later, maybe tonight. Now let's jump into the good stuff. All right, comments. Creighton says, uh, "Makes sense to moderate rate hikes." That's true. That's what he did say. And then, um, see, Swamp Witch, me and Swamp Witch are the same. I wish it would go three to four K, but I bet bigger fish nests will be buying it up before I get those kind of deals. And I got to tell you, even though that we heard Jerome Powell say we're going to, you know, we might start moderating rate hikes in uh, December in the next meeting, all that means to me is we're going to keep raising the rates until we hit 2%. And if it takes years, we will keep doing that. So it's death by a thousand cuts if you want to go that route. Me personally, I'm just like, I just wish they would have gotten out the door and just said, look, 100 basis points right off the bat. Bing, bang, boom. And guess what? We're going to do it again. Now we'll go 75, 75. Now we'll go 50, 50. I thought it would just be a better way just to get things out because we know where things are going, right? I mean, that's just how it is. So, but again, I could be wrong. I mean, the market responded quite favorably with Jerome, uh, but now it's tapering off. Okay, well, I don't know where it's going. Don't ask me. But it's just, it's just sometimes it's just funny how, how the market reacts. Okay. Jackal says, I don't use crypto. I use Bitcoin as a savings account. That's a good statement. Yeah, there's a lot more uh, Bitcoin maxis these days. I will tell you that. No water for you. Do you research, says the pickle. Gandalf the Gray says, I'm using crypto in the hopes that I can position my stepkids and their kids. I don't have to live through the financial hardships I have. That's a good way to do it. Give them a, that's what we do with our kids, you know, give them a, give them a leg up, you know, make a, make them a little bit easier, but don't give them everything. You know, then they get lazy and then those, then they're those spoiled rich kids that blow everything. So, uh, yeah, but I mean, like me and the wife, we thought, well, we could just give, you know, the inheritance away and when we kick the bucket, but uh, we thought, well, what's the point of that? We could live to be a hundred and then it's not so great. So we give them a little help along the way. Some might never got an opportunity myself. Let's see. Final squeeze after Christmas guns and loaded. It could be. <laughs> Pumped up gaming says, Rob, I really want to apply the rules of taking profits, but to be completely honest, I just don't have the stones. My FOMO comes from the fear of selling too early. I'm good at buying a dip though. So that's okay. That's all right. I just will, I have a question. Is that the same sentiment that everybody has as far as like it's hard to take profits? It's easy to buy. I, I know it's easy to buy because I did that forever, but is it hard to take profits? And I say that as if like I I have no problems. Of course, I have problems taking profits. But you have to do it. Um, this isn't financial advice, but I, I'll tell you what my problem is. My problem is, is that if I don't grease the wheels, meaning I don't take profits along the way, I won't be able to take profits when the time comes. So it's just like, it's like training for a marathon, right? You don't run a marathon every day to get to the marathon and then run the marathon. Run a couple miles here, you know, go 
do a 5K here and there, do something small. And then when the time comes, you're ready to act because you've greased the wheels. So for me, I always feel like I have to do it because when those Pi Cycle Tops and those MVRVZ scores come out or the RSI comes out and you're super high, or we take a look at some other data points, uh, time and risk factors, and, and we're way, way overheated for the cycle, that's when I have to act. And I will thank myself that I took the little two, three, five percent uh, gains across the way. So I know how it feels. And that's it. So pumped up. Uh, it's That's just what I do. But you, you could do it the other way. Uh, <laughs> I love Chris. It's great. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. That's the truth. I use crypto to buy tokens. Hope they go up in value. And that's it. Why are we lying to ourselves? I mean, I'd like to do you know some some great things. There's some great products out there. Digital IDs again. I mean, uh, the NFTs as far as like uh, saying what your property is. Uh, World Mobile Token built on Cardano, giving you know connecting the unconnected. Having people use stable coins in third world countries, whereas if they didn't use it, they, their whole entire fiat system would be inflated away. Those are great use cases. I, I can't deny those things. But a lot of times people look at this and go, well, we want the numbers to go up. And that's true. However, I'd much rather invest in those projects that are actually doing something, have real world utility, and can actually be used. So I'll just say that. All right. Tom Crown, that loser. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Tom Crown's a great guy. He was on the show. Uh, I can need to get him back. He was a smart guy. And uh, he did the uh, critique of the um, of our uh, exit strategy. So, yeah, check out Tom Crown's uh, show. He's got some cool glasses he always wears. And I got to get him back. I got to get him back on the show. He's a good guy. Uh, I'm in the same page. Yeah, see, a lot of people are. <laughs> JT, I can't wait until my problem is if I should take profits. If you're here for the class of 2021, 2022, it's coming. It's coming faster than you think. I know it sucks right now, but trust me, before you know it, you'll be like, wow, can you believe a year just passed by and now we're actually over a trillion market cap again? Now we're at 1.5. Oh, look at that. We're at 2 trillion. Oh, look, look, 3 trillion. Are we getting all time highs? I don't know. These things are looking pretty good. Before you know it, you're like, wow, we're at all time highs. It happens faster than you think. So, JT, I feel you. Only on my favorite coins. Uh, I just probably can't wait to take profits. Let's see. Len Mano. Crypto has survived. The 2008 crash where the banks caused millions to lose their homes and jobs and savings. It, it set off a recession that destroyed over 30 trillion of the world's wealth. That's true. That's exactly why Bitcoin was created, matter of fact. <laughs> Bicky, I love to buy the top and have a fun slide the bottom. <laughs> uh, quandary. I think quandary is the same thing that we're all doing. I didn't take profits very well last year, made some money, but could have made way more. This is why we talk about taking profits now. Who taught? Who does that? Just us. Well, some other people do. But I'm doing it now to get everybody ready at some point uh, to take those profits. Bear markets don't last forever. Bull cycles definitely don't last forever. So it's just something that I just try to do. We're slow ones. We're all slow, baby. We're all slow. Yeah, Rhonda Paul says it. Santa's rally has started. That could be it. Maybe that's it. Rule of advice, never travel at your ledger. I, You know what? I did. Uh, my ledger, I only went back to Texas from Puerto Rico in, uh, gosh, April, May. Yeah, April and May. I forgot my my couple of my ledgers here, and I didn't have them. So I was like, well, shoot. Thankfully, I had my mnemonic phrases, which I wrote down in my stone book. Link in the description. And uh, I just uh, sent a message to Ledger. Or I just ordered another Ledger. Came to my house in like five days, three to five days. And then I just put in my mnemonic phrase, and all my you know six figures crypto was still there. It's great. So, yeah, it's a good point. Don't, don't travel without it. <laughs> a prime example of people buying crypto no interest in the use case is Shiba. Shiba, you know. I don't know what Shiba, you know, does. At least with Dogecoin. At least with Doge, you got, you know, uh, the owner of Twitter, CEO of Tesla, and uh, 
SpaceX talking about it. And who knows if they, I don't know, integrate that into Twitter. That would be awesome. Imagine what the price would do for, imagine what the price would do for Dogecoin if they did implement that into Twitter and you were able to use it as payments and as far as like tipping people. That'd be awesome. Ah, Barney Rumble. Barney Bumble. Eh, thanks for coming to a member. Thank you. Jeff, you playing the log game. Not Meme is here. Darth Mike is here. It's much easier to sell when you realize you may be used as exit liquidity for hedge funds. That's a good point. And VCs, but I've not sold yet, but only got into crypto early 21 and waits around 2025. It's a good plan. Just stick around. And remember, like we talked about before, if you think that uh, people who've held on to Bitcoin as the OGs, uh, don't dump on you. Just take a look at look into Bitcoin. Just I, I'm going to have you guys do it. There's a website called lookintobitcoin.com. Links in the description. Click on whale shadows, and you can see Bitcoin that has never moved in four to five years, seven to nine years, ten plus years. When it gets moved around, which essentially means that if you're going moving out of cold storage, chances are you might be selling. And uh, it always happens at all time highs. So just remember that. And I'm not saying that they're doing that. I'm just saying that's just what the data shows you. Don't, don't sell us of 2017. Well, connect to one, that's me and you both. But I did sell some. And, I, and I, I'm, I, I'll tell you again why I sold. Because I read the white paper. White paper said Bitcoin's for peer-to-peer -peer transactions. I, would like, I wanted to buy this house. And they wouldn't take Bitcoin. So I said, well, I'll just exchange it for dollars and give you the dollars. Uh, Rob, who's a good YouTuber to listen to for stocks? Echoes from Above was really great. I still like his channel, but he does a lot of, uh, he does a lot of like, like I don't know, puff pieces or like he gets into fights with people. And uh, I'm like, Jason, hey, just, just do the stock stuff and the macro. That's what I like, but I guess he's, he's bored with that. But as far as stocks, you know what's a really great channel? Wealthy on W E A L T H I O N. That's a great channel. Mm. Digital asset news. Also, with a little luck, crypto will set me free, and not because I don't want to work. Because as I get older, I realize I would rather spend time with my family, not coworkers. Yeah, it's true. But uh, I will just tell you guys: like I've tried to retire before, it sucks. You'll always have. You'll always try to find something to do. Hopefully, you help people in the in the in the long run too. Uh, yeah, old bears got it right. Voyager had a lock on my profits early in their filings. Now they get to pick a random day in a bear market. Not cool. That is not cool. I just wish they would just that. Uh, what is it? INX or whatever it was called. I wish wish or Binance or whoever buys Voyager because now there's two bids, which is great. Just wish they'd buy Voyager so we can get our crypto back and reinvest or do whatever we want to. I personally will just, I didn't have much on there, all my VGX tokens. So I thought, man, why not? But uh, it's five figures. Not what I was hoping for, but if I can get that back, hey man, uh, I'll probably be reinvesting into some really cheap, well, cheap Bitcoin for sure. And go from there. Yeah. I gave all my to Alex over at Celsius. I got six figures on that one. Ah, <laughs> that's not true. WEF is hosting Shiba Inu. I don't know if that's true. And uh, maybe it's FUD or maybe it's not, but I don't really care anymore. I think we should be spreading more FUD. If we would have spread more FUD, maybe a lot of people wouldn't have, would have gotten out of FTX and Celsius and Voyager a lot quicker, huh? So from now on, if I hear something and there's any, even a whiff of it being true, I will talk about it. It's up to you and your platform to prove me wrong. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, and you're right. Quandus, I don't say Doge because the alien might actually make the coin a viable one. It could. That's what's crazy. Might be time to pick up some, some Doge coin. I buy Doge because I personally like how fast it is. And that's proof of work. If it was a proof of work stake. I'll sell my bag. Hmm, very interesting. <laughs> the irony would be if Elon decided to use Luna. You know, you know what the irony would be? The irony would be if so there was a threat from Apple 
that they were going to take the uh, Twitter uh, app off of uh, the App Store. And Elon said, if you do that, I will create my own phone and my own ecosystem. So well, you can do it. I don't want to make my own phone, but if you do, I'll make my own. And uh, we'll see how that works out because we just, just to keep Twitter going. And I thought, man, wouldn't that be crazy if they picked up Solana? Because, you know, Solana's trying to develop that phone. And he goes, hey, you guys are already kind of ahead, so let's just team up and work out. Now, that would be interesting. I don't think that's going to happen, though. Any news about XRP? No, uh, but follow uh, Jungle Inc. And Jungle's got great info on, on the XRP situation. And Digital Asset Investor, if he's still around. And uh, who's big into XRP? Those are the ones I used to watch all the time. Let's see. <laughs> Baby whales will dump on the week. Capitalism, point number one. It can be true. Again, look into Bitcoin. Click on whale shadows. Go from there. Ah, Aaron, that's a good question. How did you go about replacing the ledger? Anything special you do? Is this on the Dan Teaches 2 channel? Yes, it is. Matter of fact, it's a great point. So on danteachescrypto.com, the free website, if you go to module two, there's only six modules. Safety, uh, I show you how to, you know, what a private key is, what a public key is, what a mnemonic phrase is, how to set up your ledger, how to reestablish your ledger if you lose it, how to update your firmware, how to take crypto from an exchange and put it onto your ledger, also to how to bring it back. Very simple. I break them down into bite-sized pieces. So yeah, I'll, I'll show you how to do it. It's actually quite simple to do. You'd be surprised. And I recommend everybody to do it. And now, one more thing I, re I recommend is if you're going to send any crypto anywhere to a ledger or somebody else, always do a test transaction first. I know if you're doing Ethereum, it sucks, but you know what really sucks? Losing a couple of Ethereum because you sent it the wrong address or the wrong chain. That's happened before to me. Kapo Khan, Dan is not your dad. This is not financial advice. So true. Very true. Yeah, Panda Pie. Uh, Powell's video was entertaining, that's for sure. Quandry says, do you do videos about buying property too, Rob? No, but there was one that I did. I'll show you. It's pretty much all the things that I know how to, how to do for short-term rentals. And it's on, uh, let's see. Let's go here. Uh, if you go to, yeah, I got two videos. If you go to playlists in my channel, I got two videos on uh, real estate. And it's how to find, how I find real estate, how I use different data points to do it, how to set up everything for Airbnb and Verbo and VRBO. That's what we do. So uh, it's right there. Also free. <laughs> Why is Bitcoin pumping? People heard something different than I heard. So Bitcoin, today's doing pretty good. Like Jerome Powell's speech was at 2.30. So you can see here that around one o'clock, 1300 hours, you had a Bitcoin price of 16.9. And then before the speech, you had a price of 16.7. And that was at 1354, 1400 hours. Then at 2.30, right when it started, there was a little bit of a dip. People were probably like, he's going to be super hawkish, which I kind of thought he was more hawkish than uh, he could have been. And then it just went up. So it went up. Now we broke above 17K. And you know what that means? Traders are probably taking profits. They're like, ah, thank you. And then off you go. So they went, it's a pretty good day. You know, from 16.7 to 17, almost 17.2, probably took profits right there. Maybe that's the reason, or maybe people think that it's going to go to the moon. I don't know. Mm -hmm. and again any questions i can answer i think i'm not good tom is right i'm not a bitcoin maxi but 95 percent of also fail that's true alex says so do you have two houses then rob i do uh i have uh we have uh homes here and then rental properties here in puerto rico we have uh homes in uh in el paso texas 
and uh, rental properties. And also we have uh, one in Houston. So it's just, and of course, if you're wondering, um, as far as diversification, like we've talked about uh, plethora, plethora, plethora of times. Uh, here's what my, whoops. Here's what my allocation is essentially. So I got a lot, of, I try to, right now I'm keeping things in cash, not too much in uh, stable coins. 5% are, are in some crypto degen plays. And of course the price is dropping because they're going down. Although Genso Kishi just came out and they did a deal with a Japanese city for their game, which is, I was happy because I invested in Genso Kishi. 4% was in that masterworks, the fractionalized shares of art. 5% uh, is in uh, land, and 35 is in houses, and condos, and apartment complexes. That's about 40%. And 5% is uh, my Amazon business, which is kind of tanking right now. That's not okay. It's Q4. 15% is on, in staking on top of other crypto and then IRA uh, for iTrust. Because you, know, you, you, you can't put a lot of your crypto into a Roth IRA. They don't allow it. It's not legally uh, accept. It's not acceptable. It's not legal. If you can max out around six or seven thousand a year, and then of course five percent in some stocks that I got into for some reason. I don't know. I should probably get out of those. But I think I mean stocks are down so much. I mean, geez, Louise. I mean, you got like I mean Tesla's. I mean, took a big hit. I mean Facebook, uh, Amazon stock is down. Airbnb stock. Those are the things that I've gotten into. So I'm like, ugh, I mean, why not? Yeah, Bill, I hope you did too. I hope I can get my crypto out of BlockFi. God dang, BlockFi going down. Although I will say this, you know, I'm impressed about BlockFi. They published their chapter 11 documentation, said we're going to chapter 11. Sorry about that, which was two days ago. Yesterday, they came out and said, here is our reorganization plan. 24 hours, a reorganization plan. That's amazing. And I look at places like, like Celsius, I'm like, you guys have had five months and haven't done squat. JD, you're an all right guy. I try, JD. Uh, Amy Johnson? Uh, oh, thanks. Here since the beginning. Glad I avoided chasing yield generating products like Celsius and Voyager. Yeah, I can't say the same thing for myself. And although my ETH has been locked for longer than I want, on and beacon yeah i don't know about that that shanghai upgrade for ethereum we'll see how it goes but again ethereum is still building i mean quite nicely they are like we talked about the ranking of active developer accounts ethereum is number one cardano is two polka dot is three cosmos is four and near is five i like that because i own all of those so that's just a and here's the here's the sentiment i don't know what this one is in January 2022, someone made an amazing amount of work. I'm going to guess that's maybe that's Ethereum for the merge, but that wasn't around that time. I don't know. Not sure. But uh, here you are for, I guess the date was 17 November. Let's see. Maybe we can find it. What is this? It's like a greenish. I can't even tell. Anyhow, people are still developing. That's what counts. Uh, please make a list of coins we can hold till the next bull cycle. Nope. I'm not doing that. That's, uh, that's up for you. Although, I will give you a price prediction. Are you ready for this? I'm not, but it's not my price prediction. I found this on, I, I, I'll show you. And I thought it was pretty good. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Capo of crypto. Capo of crypto. Il capo de crypto. Okay. And uh, this person got up around 600, almost 700,000 followers. Uh, swing trader, long-term investor, crypto since 2017. Yeah, about me. We well, got in February, so that was before me. He says, uh, I spent hundreds of hours analyzing the market and to come to the conclusion that Capitulation is a matter of time. Bitcoin should reach 12,000. All right, I'm down with that. Ethereum is 6,700, please, please. 
altcoins should drop 40, 50%, and S coins 50% plus. I won't post any more here until confirmation validation. I'm like, I can, I can see those numbers. I can see that actually uh, happen, uh, going out. I'm not for sure if that's going to happen, but I can see it. Will it happen? I don't know. With Meta, I still, I still own some Meta. I, I sold a bunch because of my exit strategy, but I still got some. <laughs> Puerto Rico Steven, you should come to the uh, meetup if you're here. Uh, bienvenido. <laughs> say it's like such a... So white, why I say it. <laughs> ben Cohen sold me his Bitcoin in May 2021. WF and SHIB is not good news. No, it is not. Yeah. You know, Tika, me and you are the same way. I started buying Bitcoin at 65K. We'll have to wait until it goes 100K. I did the same thing in 2017. I think I bought around 17, 5, 18,000. I mean, I bought it a little, little less, but uh, I bought it near the top too. So I just figured, well, all they do is just, just like the military, just stick around and I'll get promoted. That's pretty much what happened. Jayon Chow. Robbie should look at debt maturity date on Genesis Parent. There's 500 million debt oof, on May 2023 and $1.2 billion debt June. Oh, do. 500 million was IAU debt from 3AC fiasco. Bitcoin at 6K. I don't see why not. And like when people are saying, like, you know, like this is the bottom, this is the bottom, it's not the bottom. There's so much contagion we don't even know about yet. That's the thing. That's why I'm always surprised, like, like on these days, like when the it goes up, that's it's probably just a bunch of, you know, maybe some uh, traders doing their trading thing. But, uh, I mean, who who saw all the contagion coming out? And and I will remind you of, uh, of the amount, the sheer magnitude of FTX and all the tentacles that they touched. So if you think that we're going to keep going higher, maybe, I just don't see it. I'm just waiting for the shoes to drop. And I'm just sitting here on my cash just going, okay. I'm ready. And that's it. It's a good question. What kind of crypto would Trump have? Oh, I don't know. I probably, well, actually, he, he hates crypto because he wants, his idea is he wants the dollar to be the remaining strong sector that it is. So why do that? But, what would he have? It would probably be a crypto that he created himself. That's what it has to be. And that would also give you access to NFTs and maybe a Mar-a-Lago visit. I don't know. Oh, no. Ger Genesis Parent owes money. Thank you. That's exactly what it is. What's your take on Elon? You think he's legit? Knows how to create a business. <laughs> WTF are you on? Ah, oh, man. <laughs> I could be yours. I doubt it, Rex. I doubt it. Dr. Barry's got a good question. Everyone talks about the ledger, but what about Arculus? Is anyone using that for cold storage and like it? So first of all, you know who uses it a lot? And that's uh, uh, it's the owner of uh, San Juan Smokehouse. He's been talking about it. I see him post on Twitter and he talks about Arculus. And this, this is what it looks like. I don't have a, an a affiliate link. I don't have a link. You got to find it yourself. But it's just this metal card. And that's all it is. And that's all I really know. So I'm going to talk to him about it tonight and see what uh, he says. That's kind of neat. Huh? Just have a little metal card. I don't know if that's a good idea to put it right there, but whatever. So yeah, that's your sense of your ledger. Yeah. Uh, do you have a tracer like hedging your bet? I do not. I did not have a tracer. <laughs> you need Dan, not your dad merch. Stake it till you make it. That's true. Jerome P is optimistic. Yeah, money's out there. I mean, not just for me. Yeah, see? J-U-Q-Q-Q says, as a Finland national citizen, I just listened to Jay Powell talk. I didn't see him so hawkish. To me, it's super unpredictable. 
what goes on with ACB now? They seem to follow the herd. Thoughts? Again, when I took a look at it, I just thought that it was continuing to be hawkish. I think he's pretty much saying, like, we're going to keep busting, cracking skulls until we hit 2%. And that 2% is going to happen. He did say we could slow down with the uh, rate hikes. But I always, like I said, I always think it's like if you're going to rate hikes, you know, do 25 and 50 and just keep going and going and going. You're just prolonging my agony. Just let everything collapse so we can start again. But no, 25, you know, 25 points, 50 points here, death by a thousand cuts. But again, that's how I saw it. A lot of people, some people said, no, no, no. You, you know, he's, they're slowing down. So it's good. It's good. Okay. Meme, that's a great question. We should talk about this. What do you think about SIPC insurance for exchanges? I think any insurance would be fantastic. The real thing though is I think we need just the little slight, the ability to have a little, some, some, something to oversight the exchanges. That could be the government. That could be other exchanges. I don't really care. But uh, co-mingling of funds and proof of reserves is cute. That's real nice. It's adorable. But again, like if you got, I have proof of reserves. I have a billion dollars in my exchange and I can, I'm, I'm all good for everybody. Unfortunately, I loaned out 10 billion uh, that you guys don't know about because, you know, that's what we do in the shadows. So again, um, as far as insurance, change, that would be a game changer. Kind of like FDIC we have with the dollar. Hmm. Who's going to, here's my next question. Who's going to insure these exchanges? I mean, would you? I wouldn't. I think I would, you could probably do it if you said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll insure you guys, but you guys, I have to be here constantly. My team has to be here constantly and I have to take a look at your books and not the books that you show everybody else, like the real ones. But again, good luck because Bernie made off the exact same thing. And people are going to screw you over. They're going to screw you over. That's why it's great to follow the rules, right? Don't leave any exchanges. You don't have to, you don't have to trust them. You can verify by taking everything off and you're good to go. I think that's it. 51 minutes. So... Yeah, Bill's got a point. FYI, taking profits is another way of saying dumping on somebody else. You know, that is one of those things, though. You know, if you really think about it, and you really, really think, what am I doing when I take profits? Well, like you're, someone else is picking up your bags. That could be so much as the cost of admission to the show, or that could be, well, you know, I'm selling my Ethereum because people need Ethereum for gas fees. It's true. It is the absolute truth. That's why, like, I like, again, the products that actually have a you know some utility and you actually use them for something as opposed to I just got this great NFT of a cartoon frog and I just sold it. I I bought it for Ethereum, I sold it for 10 Ethereum, you know, whatever. Hedera is underrated. Brazil is not a small country, very true. Tyler's right. 24 hours in a reorg plan, a reorg plan makes people think they're talking about BlockFi. But they, that they've known for a while and got ahead of the news. So I can work. Trust me. If you're a company in the financial sector, like these places are, you know that you're when you're insolvent. You know when you're going to start to go chapter 11. You know when it's going to be chapter 11 versus chapter 7. So they all knew this. It's just that some didn't do a thing for reorganization. And the ones that didn't do a reorg knew that they couldn't reorganize. Voyager's one of them. Voyager knows they can't reorganize. They were operating illegally in multiple states. That's why they had um, the not Department of Justice. Um, the, oh, what is it? The Department of Justice, the governors that would come out. No, 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 attorney generals. That's what I'm trying to say. The attorney generals would come out and say, look, you're not regulated. We're going to have to have you cease and assist. I'm like, well, we'll fix that later. So they reorganize and all the states come after them. So they know they can't. Ah, Investor Bren. Been a long time, buddy. I'm very curious to see what BlockFi did to F things up. It's good they have a plan, but they should have needed it in the first place. So it shouldn't be a pat on the back. No, no, no. You're right. It shouldn't be a pat on the back. Pat on the back. That's why it's so important that we are pay attention to the projects and the exchanges that stay afloat and do the right things. 
I gotta tell you, Kraken, I've always liked Kraken. I always like Jess, Jesse Powell. Um, not Jerome, Jesse Powell, the former CEO. So for them to say, okay, we gotta lay some people off, but everybody's funds are good, you know, we're still operating. That's a good business. That's a great business. That's how businesses should go. So really look for those businesses that uh, keep keep everything on the up and up. And the ones that, that fell, well, off they go. That, that, that's why in the next bull run, I won't be looking at other exchanges. Whoever makes it to this one, I will stick with you forever because this is probably the worst it's going to get. It can always get worse, Rob. That's true. So Chaotic Coder says, Rob, with your homes and business, you must have LLCs and living trusts. We have trusts. We have trusts for uh, the properties when we kick it. That's true. Have you found any good solutions for crypto within trusts? So Dr. Payne talks about this, actually. He's probably on the, on, in here. You can put your, your crypto within a trust and do it with a, as far as like an IRA, but you have to go through the whole legal process. So I haven't done that yet. Right now, I just have it on an iTrust. So that's about it. As far as like the Roth IRA stuff. Uh, what's this? Rob, with this usual cycle going on for many cycles, do you think it's possible to start ABC correction out of normal and how likely? I don't know. Like the cycles I always look at as the four-year cycles, but that doesn't mean that they're going to play out perfectly. I don't, and I, I'm not even, it's like a 50-50 shot, I think sometimes, but it doesn't matter. Because in the next next bull run, things are going to get are going to get overheated. There's a video I'd like everybody to watch. And uh, where is it? There's two, and it'll make a lot of sense if you watch them. Oh, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, my password. Just kidding. Uh, Dante's Crypto Investing. Just watch these two videos. Because at some point, not just the days, not just the months, but the cycles start to really heat up. And you can see it in these high cycle tops, net un unrealized profit and loss, time and risk bands. I mean, you can see when it's a pretty good time to probably take some big profits. And I talk about them all right there. And then this is the video. I explain it, how I do it, how I'm going to do it. And that's it. Am I going to time the top perfectly? No. But uh, I don't need to really think about the cycles too much anymore. I mean, it's, it's nice to say, okay, well, the halving's in 2024. So logically, it's always happened at an all-time high after the, the halving, which will be in around March 2024. So I don't expect that to happen until afterwards. But I could be wrong. Something could happen. President Kamala Harris could come out and say, you know what? We're going to make Bitcoin the, Federal Res the, the global reserve currency. So in that situation, I don't need any charts to tell me, what the tell me what's going to happen on that one. So yeah, that's it. Uh, guys, can we get some new people in Ah, Jarky, sending a big hello from Qatar. Prices of coins are irrelevant. The FUD between Republicans and Democrats will only end with civil war in America. America. Everything in life, in, in life, in life goes through circles. Yeah, so Bert, Jarky might have a point. I don't know about the civil war, but I will say this. Just do a Google search of the fourth turning, T-U-R-N-I-N-G, and... Uh, be prepared to lose your lunch because uh, we're right there. Well, finally, this guy shows up. Mullet. Where you been? Too busy playing golf in Florida? Don't listen to opinions here or anywhere online. See? Shows up just to, just to bust me down. What's up, Mullet? How you been, buddy? Mm, I think we're good. Did the Fed announce inflation numbers? No, that'll come December 3rd, 2nd, somewhere in there. Mm, trust. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I can't say that. That's pretty good. And I think that's it. When you take profits, you're going back into FEMA. It's true. You know, if you're, but I will tell you this. If your job is to accumulate as much crypto as you possibly can for you, yourself, and future generations, and we know that there is a lot of cycles that go on, would not behoove you to, at the times when things get massively overheated, because you know people are going to dump, to take a little profits, sit on the sidelines, and then wait for it to come back. Just a thought. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's it. So look, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. I really do. This has been fun. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. If you're in the Puerto Rico area, I would like to see you down at the Smokehouse today in uh, two hours. Let's have some beers. And that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. Appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios.